Hey everyone, today I wanted to do a quick impromptu video on all of the tools of the trade. So I pretty much laid everything out here that I use in my cleaning process. Some that uh, I've moved away from over time and others that are my go-to staples when I'm doing the cleaning and, and pressing process. So I, I figured I'd throw them all out here and talk about each one of them and, and their uses and applications or why I, I don't particularly use them anymore. So uh, a couple of quick things we'll just go through first is uh, some things that I use to, to check or overlook the book. So here is a UV flashlight. This is one of the more recent additions to the, the tools over here. Uh, after I got caught submitting a book that had some color touch that I probably should have done a better job at identifying. I actually carry this away with, uh, with me when I go to, to cons to look at books or even at comic stores if I'm planning on doing some buying. I would not buy a book that's over a hundred bucks or a couple hundred bucks without thoroughly checking through it, especially for, for color touch. So this guy, it only works for certain types of inks, but if it's something like permanent marker or marker that's on there, it should heat up a little bit. You'll see it glow a, a little in comparison to, to the rest of the book. So that, that's a good thing to look at. Uh, another way you can detect color touch is by opening the front and back cover. A lot of times the ink will bleed through. So if people are using, let's say black marker to fill in spine, break, uh, uh, spine ticks that break color on the spine of the book, then you can easily open it up and, and you should see it bleed through to the other side since the other side is usually tan. So that's another way that you can use in conjunction with uh, this UV flashlight to be able to detect any color touch. So that's kind of one tool that's in the collection, not necessarily for cleaning process, but you can avoid uh, any type of issues with getting into books that have some type of restoration on them that, that you uh, weren't expecting. So let's talk more specifically about what I use in the cleaning process. It, when I started out, I was using these eraser pads here. So these are drafting eraser pads. And I had been following somebody that used them pretty exclusively in their cleaning process. And all it is is a basically a big sack of uh, shreds of, of eraser. And a couple of the reasons why I moved away from using it. First of all, it makes a freaking mess. I mean, you can even see it on my hands just from grabbing it. It's already all on, on the, the table. Uh, and it's the reason why I have this guy right here. So if you're going to experiment with this, pick up one of these. This isn't bad to have in the, in the first place, but a little brush to be able to clean your workspace, get all the eraser shards out of the, out of the way so that you're not uh, introducing those into the pressing process and they're getting melted and pressed into the book when, when you're doing that. So this is okay for cleaning like around the edges of the, of the book. If you're using, if you see my videos, how I, I line up the uh, backer board and, and I'll use that to kind of edge away from the color and just focus on a certain section of the book. You can use that in this, in this this uh, with this particular drafting eraser, but it, it's kind of like just a broad stroke tool. It's, it's not really for fine detail work. And a lot of the times I feel like it just makes a, a bigger mess than, than need be. I, I also don't really like using this on the colored portions of, of the book because it will definitely take up the color. So you will lighten the, the color, remove the gloss if you're using this on any place else other than the, the edges of the book. So I pretty much stopped uh, using that in the cleaning process and have really become to rely on these uh, absorbing pads. So we'll slide this off to the side and uh, let's talk about what I uh, use predominantly. So the two you'll, tools you'll see me use is mostly this pen with these white polymer erasers and my absorbing pad. But first let's go in process of, of how I usually clean the book. So you'll, you'll see that I have my gloves set out here. That's usually my first step. All my videos, I wear gloves. You've probably heard debates about glove wearing and, and working with comics. I promise you that if you're gonna be handling a book, you should be wearing gloves. You don't want the oils from your skin to be bleeding onto the, the pages or, or getting on anywhere, or, uh, especially on, on books like, let's say ASM 298, 29, uh, 299 through 301 that have those black covers. You do not want fingerprints on them. You will get dinged on it. And what I mean is not just, not just like the, the residue that your oils leave, but your oils will actually break down the, the ink of the book and you'll leave basically a worn area in the shape of your fingerprint on the, the black back cover of those books and you will get crushed by that engraving. So I always wear gloves uh, when, I'm, when I'm handling books and uh, doing the cleaning process. 
So after I glove up, the next kind of thing I do is uh, I'll wipe down the book and that's usually done during the, using these Swifter pads. So these Swifter pads, uh, I'll, you'll see me go over the, the front of the book and basically I'm just going in small light circles around the top of the book. I get these in boxes. I actually have the, the box right here to show you guys. One thing I will note is do not get the scented kind. You don't want your book smelling like some weird lavender or vanilla scent. So you need uh, scent free, unscented, all right? Uh, Swifter pads, these are the ones I get on Amazon. They are in packs of 52. You will go through them, change them frequently. No use to, to use more than, uh, on them more than one book or so. So you should probably throw it out after each book. But every book will get a wipe down. I'll constantly use this to clean up any kind of a uh, racer debris throughout the process. And this is great for just uh, trying to get out some of the light soiling to the cover. And you'll notice it'll get, it'll get uh, dirty on it. So you'll, uh, you'll see that it's actually removing some soiling. In the same regard, you can use these small uh, pads, uh, cotton pads, to do the same thing. These are kind of a finer material. One thing I will say with this is because it is larger, be careful of the edges of the book. So as you're cleaning the edges, you know, stay away from the corners because sometimes you can grab it with the bottom end that you're not paying attention to and end up introducing a bend that wasn't there. If you want to get do some more fine work, these are a great thing to do to focus on removing a, a small area of soiling or, or something. So I always have these around uh, as well to be using in conjunction with this as uh, I'm going through the cleaning process. Now, after I wipe down the book, I usually start with the, the edges and the surround. And to do that, I use these white polymer erasers. And you get these uh, on Amazon in packs of like 25 or packs of 50. They last a pretty fair amount of time. I mean, you can see this is one that I've been using for a while. So this is how they come new. That's basically one I've been using. They kind of work a little better when you wear them down a little bit. When you first get them going, they don't, they don't do as well. But when you get them worn, they actually perform a, a little better. And you can see the one I keep on my pen cap is, uh, is pretty... Uh, worn as well and you want to keep as you use them you want to keep wiping them off you can wipe them off on an absorbing pad or on some other cotton pad to get the dirt off of them and keep them nice and white so uh, you will go through these these are a staple I, I also use it in conjunction with this pen and uh, I use the pen for other things that I'll talk about in a second so those, those are the, that's where I'll start. I'll start with the, with the white polymer eraser, and then I will move on to using the absorbing pads. And that's pretty much my workhorse. Now, there's another alternative. The other alternative that I don't have an example here to show you is the absorbing putty. And it's like this pink gooey stuff that you uh, roll over the, the cover of the book. And it does pretty much the same thing. It's supposed to lift soot or dirt off, uh, off paper. The only downside is that sometimes if you're not using it right and you haven't kneaded it well in your hands, then uh, you can leave a pink residue on the, the comic book that's difficult to get up. So I haven't really, I started out with these. I haven't really tried the putty, so I can't comment too much of these, but I have really great success with the, with the pads. So I buy these in big blocks. They come, wish I had one here to show you, but they come in bigger blocks. I cut them into these pieces that are about one inch uh, by three quarters of an inch. And then whatever that is, four inches or so long, let's see, three inches long. Uh, so I'll use these, I'll cut them up, and you can see this one's one that's uh, been used, uh, the dirt that's on there. And this is what I'll use on the cover. So this is safe for the colored parts of the book. I won't go crazy with it, but you basically just want to go light unidirectionally. You'll go through these. As you use them, you can cut off the edge which is, uh, again, another tool in the box, this X-Acto knife, you will use this a lot. You basically can go through and just cut the tip off that and uh, use the rest of the pad. So this is uh, what I usually go to in, in the process uh, for cleaning the book and is what does a, a large amount of the work. Now, now that you have like eraser residue and stuff all over the place, it's always good to have one of these in conjunction with your, your wipe pad. You can use this to kind of wipe things off, or if you want to clean your, your work area, you can use this little hairbrush to kind of clean everything up. So it's nice to have around. I, I use it for other things as well, uh, but it, I got it when I was using the drafting eraser for a lot of stuff. So that was one of the main reasons that I picked this up, but I still keep it in the kit. All right, so let's see. Let's talk about uh, some of the other items here. So we've gone through the, the cleaning process. We have the pads. The last part of the cleaning process, I have a couple other erasers 
that I don't really use. Like here's a kneaded eraser. Some people love these. It's really good if you have an area that's got a really uh, a lot of soiling and you really can't get uh, this to work as much. You can use a kneaded eraser to kind of uh, be able to uh, remove any residual uh, marks or, or debris on there. I don't use uh, other types of erasers too much, but I do keep them in the collection. I, I bought a whole bunch of them. So there's a white polymer block. You could use these as well, pretty much equivalent. So there's, uh, there's the optional erasers that you have in there. One of the eraser packs came with this guy. I've seen other people use it. I just don't use it. I mean, it, it's a cool idea. So basically the idea is, is if there's areas on the book that are in between, let's say you're looking at the trade dress or something, and there's a little area of white that has uh, soiling and you want to be able to clean it with the eraser, you basically put this shape over it and it protects the edges and then you can erase uh, the area on top of it. I, I have it, I don't use it. If I want to do that, I basically use the edge of a, a piece of cardstock or um, magazine backward board to frame out the area that I want to work. And then I use that in the same way to kind of block the colored areas from getting any kind of damage or anything to it. So those are erasers, cleaning materials. I'll kind of move these over here as I'm uh, talking about them. We've kind of gone through all of those, gone through this. The last piece of it is uh, these uh, the uh, magic erasers or melamine pads. Now, you've heard me talk about these. I, again, I get these in the block, like the, the magic eraser blocks. I cut them up into these one inch squares and I use them very sparingly. You never want to use this on a colored area. You only want to use it on the surround and no, you will take gloss off with this. So if you really want to remove a stain, this will get it up, but you're basically like melamine acts as sandpaper. So you're basically sanding down the paper to get the, the mark off of there. Just, just keep that in mind. All right. Like when you look at the book after you've used this, yes, the stain will be gone. You will also see what looks like very, very fine sanding and gloss removal. So know that. And you might get knocked sometimes if you did it excessively on a book for gloss removal or for excessive cleaning to the cover. So just know that that you can keep these, you can use them, but they come with a risk and you just have to kind of weigh those risks with uh, the reward of, of moving a, a stubborn stain. All right, so moving on, Q-tips are always good to have at hand. Uh, I use them for the hot shots method, which I'll, I'll kind of talk about over here, and also for stain removal. So I won't talk about stain removal too extensively. Oh, oh, actually, sorry, I forgot this guy before we go into talking about stain removal. Uh, I was talking about this. Here's another eraser that's a recent addition. This is uh, a Mono Zero Elastomer Eraser. And basically it's like a little pen eraser. It has a little, an insert in there, and you can use this in place of doing this uh, to clean very small areas. And, and you have to be careful that you don't like break off the eraser tip and then now you're, uh, you're rubbing this metal point on the paper. That would be very bad. But this is great for getting in there like where they have the price logo or the comic authority uh, stamp. You can use this to get in those white areas and to clean it up. So this is really a great recent addition. Works really well at getting some, uh, attacking some small areas. So I'll, I'll add this to my eraser collection over here. And uh, I would say this is a, a great tool to, to add in there. All right. So let's get into some of the other things that, that you may uh, need or come into. So you, you will need an X-Acto knife. You use this for cutting uh, sheets of silicone release paper. You use it for breaking comics out of their case. So you're going to need it to cut the encapsulation. Uh, you use it for a bunch of stuff. You're going to need an, uh, an X-Acto in your, in your collection or uh, a knockoff brand. I like the brand name one. So I got myself an X-Acto knife and, uh, and, a, and the X-Acto blades over there. Uh, a couple other pieces. Now let's talk about, in addition to cleaning, some of the other things you may want to address with the book. So there may be uh, corners that are bent in. There may be uh, things that you need to, like writing on the cover that you're able to erase, that you need to smooth out. There may be pretty significant bends. And that's kind of what the rest of this, this stuff here is for. So let me move this over here. Move my Sharpie. I don't really talk about the Sharpie, but you're going to need one of these sharpies. I mean, you use it to write on boxes uh, when you're sending to CGC, use it to make notes on stuff. So it's a, a just you're going to have to have one in the kit, too. So uh, going back to addressing kind of any of the significant defects in the book that maybe bends or, or pages that are, that are turned over or even maybe staples that are popping out that you want to push down. So I keep a, a couple like dental tools, dental picks in there. 
this uh, this bone tool, the bone folding tool right here. And uh, those are basically what you can use to lift up a page. So if you have a, an edge of a page that's bent over, you can use this to kind of get under there and pry it up. I also use, that's what I was saying about my pen. I also use the side of the pen cap to do the same thing. So if there's a, if there's a side of a page that's bent over, I'll use this to kind of pull over. I've also used this. I won't necessarily suggest this for everything, but I've also used this to scrape up kind of like hard debris that's on there. So imagine, and it happens like food particles or something that are stuck to the cover, right? You realize that there's something kind of on there. You can't wipe them up with one of these. Sometimes just a little light scraping with something like the, the pen cap or more dangerously with a dental tool can be able to scrape off that food particle off the book and, and you're gonna be able to, to, to remove that. So I use this as kind of a dual purpose thing. I'll use that to scrape off those, those particles. You can use the dental tools to do that and to also lift up corners uh, that may be bent over. You can use the bone tools for the same thing, depending on uh, what you're trying to manipulate. There, this one particular one's a little fatter. Uh, I use this as well as the cap of the pen to push down staples if they're popping up. So very gently, and you have to be careful because again, if you if you break the staple or if you uh, move it significantly, they may it may look like you replace the staples on there, and you don't want to get caught for that. So you can use this just to push down uh, any staples that may be. Uh, popping out to be able to adjust them. So that's a, a good tool to have as well. All right, so now let's talk about uh, kind of advanced methods that you get into. Probably the biggest one is gonna be dent removal. And for dent removal, you're gonna need one of these one inch stainless steel balls. You've seen this, uh, I'll link the video, but you've seen this in my other videos that I use to basically rub onto uh, an area to massage out the dent. And you use that in conjunction with this uh, Hanger 9 uh, sealing, uh, hot heat sealing iron. And when you use this guy, you wanna keep it in between two and three. And what you'll see me do is what's called the hot sauce method. So if you have a dent, you dip this in water, get it a little damp, you put it on the area, you uh, in, then you then intermix using the, healing, the, the heat iron, pushing it down on that area uh, just for a couple seconds and then using the steel ball to rub that out. And then you'll see me go back and do that process probably a dozen or so times. So this is a, a must for dent removal, and it's a, it's a great tool to have for other things as well. It's basically like a tacking iron. You know, they use this uh, for uh, photography and, and tacking the corners and stuff. But it is uh, it's probably used for other things. I just don't know the, the wide range of stuff it's used for. But this is a, a great tool that you need for dent removal in conjunction with the steel ball and uh, to do the hot shots method. And, and again, this is just, you're rubbing out the, the dent, or if it's a, a crease, you can lighten that crease so that it's not popping up the side of the, the cover in conjunction with the, the heat iron to be able to fix that. Sometimes these can be hard to find. You can find them on eBay uh, and also on Amazon when they're in stock, but those are, those are uh, unmust for that process. Then these are on eBay as well. I think I've linked them in the in the in the uh, description of the advanced methods video that I'll link to. The last one, and this is probably a, a newer addition as well, is this uh, Pro Trim sealing tool. And what this is is a mini version of this guy. This Hanger Nine uh, Pro Trim seal comes in a box that that looks like this. And I use this for fixing. Uh, any significant spine ticks that you can't get out with pressing. So sometimes just the location of the spine tick uh, is difficult to address with pressing because it's like off to the side a little bit. And what you can do is you can use this guy to get in there and basically have parchment paper or SRP paper uh, on the side of the book. You lift the, the side off and you can run, you can run this very small edge along the edge of the spine and be able to kind of iron out any kind of defects that are uh, on the spine and lighten those spine ticks up. It can also help you get in there for some smaller dents or something where that may be hard to reach, but I've used this now for addressing spine issues a lot and uh, it's a great tool to have in the collection. They're again, relatively inexpensive when, uh, uh, when they're in stock. So these sometimes can be hard to find as well, but these two guys are, are kind of needed for advanced dent removal, advanced spine tick removal, right? So when you go, want to go beyond the, the basic pressing. The last thing that I have in there 
uh, that I haven't shown a video on, but I plan to do one next is gonna be for stain removal. So for stain removal, you're gonna want probably a Q-tip and also a paint, uh, paintbrush. So you're gonna use these to uh, apply uh, either just distilled water or peroxide and water uh, to stains to try to lighten them over time. We'll go through that in the stain removal video, but you will need a, a set of some nice, I, I like these nice paint brushes uh, of various sizes. So I kind of have a couple different sizes of those as, as well as Q-tips in, in some instances. So it really just depends. But I would say that if I take out all the tools that, that I don't always use, if you're gonna go bare bones, I would pretty much go, you can kind of ignore these, but I would pretty much go with absorbing pads, these white tip erasers, uh, the uh, pads, and then of course you're gonna need these Swifter pads in there. And, and that's going to be what you use 90% of the time. And that's ex actually exactly what I sell in my little cleaning starter kit are these, uh, the majority of these uh, items here. The other couple items I'll, I'll mention in closing is if you're going to be using this guy, these guys come with stands, but it's much easier to get this like iron pad. And that's what this is. So that's just a, a good old iron pad from uh, Amazon that is heat resistant. So when you're working with uh, one of these heating tools, you can use that as, uh, as the, the bottom to be able to, to not burn your wife's dining room table or, uh, or your work area. Uh, so that's uh, needed in there. The last piece is this cutting mat. You 100% will need this cutting mat. You use it to cut the SRP paper. I work on all of my books on top of this cutting mat. It's really easy to clean and you can find a whole bunch of different versions on Amazon. So this particular one is 24 by 18. It's nice because it has uh, inches and centimeters uh, along the side. So when you're cutting things like your absorbing pads, you can kind of get an idea of uh, the size that you need. Uh, it's just very versatile and, and a must have tool. And again, easy to clean up. So all of those uh, shavings I got on there from the the little drafting eraser, I can sit there and just wipe them right off and, and clean it up really easy. All right, so that is uh, the majority of tools in the toolbox that I use in the cleaning and, and pressing process. Uh, and again, uh, my next video to come will probably be a stain removal video. I've been working on my techniques for that and I feel like I'm at a point where I am confident in, in making a video for you guys. So please uh, drop me any comments uh, if you have any questions or maybe other things that you've used in the past that have worked for you. Uh, and uh, of course, hit the like button, hit subscribe if you like these videos and we'll uh, get more coming in the future. So thanks for joining to me.